the big dollars are still flowing as a number of companies raise nine-figure venture rounds. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headline Edition, all the AI headlines you need in around five minutes. Yesterday, we got some serious fundraising news across a number of different companies and categories within AI. And one of the standouts to me was the news that Suno, the AI music generating company, had raised $125 million. A couple interesting things from this announcement. First of all is the usage. Suno writes, we released our first product eight months ago, enabling anyone to make a song with just a simple idea. It's very early days, but 10 million people have already made music using Suno. They go on, we've seen producers crate digging, friends exchanging memes, and streamers co-creating songs with stadium-sized audiences. We've helped an artist who lost his voice bring his lyrics back to life after decades on the sidelines. We've seen teachers ignite their students' imaginations by transforming lessons into lyrics. So what's interesting to me about this is that at a $500 million valuation, which is what I think Suno commanded with this fundraising round, the investors are betting that the market for AI generative music is very, very large. In other words, from a sheer economic standpoint, they can't be just expecting a billion dollar exit to some larger music company. It suggests to me that instead, they believe that the ability to create music this easily will actually radically expand the market for who creates music. Perhaps there's also a vision for audio generation beyond music into the realm of sound, and perhaps there's an enterprise play there, but none of that is the focus of their announcement, which is clearly around music itself. To get a sense of how this round compares to other music tech, it's the 11th biggest music tech funding round of all time, and the biggest since March of 2021. It's also the biggest round so far in the music and audio AI space, with Eleven Labs' recent $80 million raise the closest one. One of the investors in this round, Shane Mack, writes, From the moment I used Suno, I was like, this is the future of music. So many unknowns, but it reminds me of the first time I used Spotify. Except in this world, the labels don't own everything. Proud to be an investor in something I believe in so much. I really look forward to figuring out how AI can actually help musicians and writers a lot more than streaming ever did. So that is the take from one side of things. And by the way, I know that Shane is personally close with a number of different musicians. In other words, his opinion on this is not just formed from some capitalist bent. At the same time, there is tons of skepticism. A number of different creators ask questions about the training data, and Emily White, formerly of Spotify, writes, A lot of talk that Suno is the future of music, but most consumers want to interact with artists, not replace them. The market for AI-generated song creation will be smaller than the market for superfandom. Fun new monetization tools for artists and allow fans to modify and mix their songs. Not an unlicensed company that trains on copyrighted material to generate Uncanny Valley novelty songs with no revenue going back to rights holders. Suno and Udio are fun, simple-to-use products. Inspiring creativity and lowering the barrier to creation are great, but let's not pretend AI-generated music is a bigger force than artists' power to create memories, experiences, self-identities, and cultural change through music. The point here is that this is no different than any other AI fundraising round right now, where there's going to be tons of excitement, some amount of skepticism, and a big wide open future that no one quite knows how will shake out. Another big funding round was Scale's Series F, a billion-dollar round at a $13.8 billion valuation. The company's blog post is Scale's Series F, expanding the data foundry for AI. The company talks a lot in its blog post about the, quote, major problems in AI data that still remain. They write, the scaling laws imply an exponentially growing need for data as models get bigger, which raises a key question. Will we run out of data? Just as data, compute, and algorithms comprise the three pillars of AI, we believe the future of AI data in turn rests on three principles. Data abundance, we must build the data foundry that ushers in an era of AI-ready data abundance and not resign ourselves to data scarcity. Frontier data, as we develop progressively more powerful AI, we must build frontier data which is always pushing the boundaries of AI capabilities towards complex reasoning, agents, multimodality, and more. Measurement and evaluation. We must build an evaluation system that enables measurement of AI to build confidence, drive adoption, and scale impact. Abundance is not the default. It's a choice. It requires bringing together the best minds in engineering operations in AI. Our calling is to build the data foundry for AI, and with today's funding, we're moving into that next phase of that journey. Over in France, we have another big, exciting early round for a French company, formerly known as Holistic AI, now known as H. The company has raised $220 million, and it seems like the game here is AI agents. Said a partner at Excel, the H team's vision of creating a large action model to automate business tasks has the ability to be transformational across all industries. As Bloomberg points out, the newest French entrant is arriving in a crowded field. Several startups are working on AI agents. Some companies are already using these agents to help with employee onboarding and managing supply chains. While courting investors, the founders of H highlighted their technical expertise in developing multi-agent AI, systems that interact and learn from their environment and each other. Given what we've seen from presentations from OpenAI, Google, and now Microsoft, it's obvious that there's going to be a lot of competition in this space. Speaking of which, one of the big things that was announced at Microsoft Build yesterday was something they're calling Team Copilot. 
The announcement post reads, Team Copilot expands Copilot beyond a personal assistant to act as a valuable team member, participating and contributing along with the team. And of course, you're always in control, assigning tasks or responsibilities to Copilot so the whole team can be more productive, collaborative, and creative together. The roles that they give as examples include a meeting facilitator, a group collaborator, where, quote, Copilot helps everyone get more out of chats, surfacing the most important information, tracking action items, and addressing unresolved issues, and Team Copilot as a project manager. One interesting little nugget, however, is that not everyone is sold on this agentic vision. One little coder on Twitter shared a post from LinkedIn from Scott Jensen, who writes, I just left Google last month. The AI projects I was working on were poorly motivated and driven by this mindless panic that as long as it had AI in it, it would be great. This myopia is not driven by a user need. It is a stone-cold panic that they are getting left behind. The vision is that there will be a Tony Stark-like Jarvis assistant in your phone that locks you into their ecosystem so hard that you'll never leave. That vision is pure catnip. The fear is that they can't afford to let someone else get there first. The exact same thing happened 13 years ago with Google+. That was a similar hysterical reaction, but to Facebook. By the way, Apple is no different. They too are trying to create this AI lock-in with Siri. When the employer eventually has no clothes, they'll be lapped by someone thinking bigger. I'm not a Luddite, there is some value to this new technology. It's just not well-motivated. This, I think, is a question that we will be exploring a lot more as all of these proto-agents and deeper assistants come to market, But for now, that is going to do it for the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition. Speaking of assistance, if you are interested in the wearable side of this question, check out the main part of the episode, where Humane is reportedly looking for a sale.